Mary had a little man, 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 and a ball. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Happy Thanksgiving. Donald Trump is warning America's neighbors, threatening to implement 25% across the board tariffs on Mexico and Canada on day one. If both countries, he says, don't crack down on their borders with the U.S. Oh. Trump cites a new caravan coming from Mexico with a group of hundreds of migrants, mostly from South and Central America, leaving Southern Mexico last week. This Ecuadorian migrant says, we want to be on the other side before the new president of the United States takes office, as he seems quite harsh on immigrants. The president-elect blames Mexico and Canada, saying his tariffs will remain in effect until such times as drugs, in particular fentanyl, and all illegal aliens stop this invasion of our country. Mexico in particular is America's largest trading partner, with the U.S. buying near half a trillion dollars of Mexican goods, like computers, cars, and electrical equipment. Tariffs could greatly impact U.S. industries, with some experts warning that Americans could face higher prices on gas, cars and food, just as inflation has been receding. Mexican authorities have broken up past caravans, with many more disbanding on their own. Yeah. But Trump's incoming border czar, Tom Homan, is now warning those migrants they will soon face harsher policies like family separation. We got to enforce immigration law, or we're never going to fix the border, and it leads to a big national security vulnerability for this nation. Later today, Homan will meet with Texas's Republican Governor Greg Abbott as he prepares for his sweeping crackdown. If enacted, these tariffs could violate the terms of the trade agreement between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada, which Trump signed into law during his first term. Trump also accused China of sending drugs pouring into our country threatening an additional 10% tariff on all Chinese products, too. Tariffs are a favorite tool of Trump's. To me, the word, most beautiful word in the dictionary is tariff, and it's my favorite word. Trump's comments drawing responses from trade partners. The Chinese embassy saying economic and trade cooperation is essentially mutually beneficial. No one will win in a trade war or a tariff war. <laughs> and Canada responding, saying they'll continue to discuss these issues with the incoming administration. Trump used tariffs as a negotiating tactic during his first term, so he's reusing that playbook again. But if he actually follows through on his campaign vow for higher tariffs, some economists estimate that could cost the average U.S. household more than $2,600 a year. Oh, oh well. Let's talk about something that really matters. Have you ever spatchcocked a turkey? <laughs> that's, that's what's top of mind over here today. Got to tell you, that's I, what I'm talking about. I it's... think that was on Mark Robinson's search list. Who? Mark Robinson. Oh, from North Carolina? <laughs> that Mark Robinson? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Don't let me derail you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 I've, I've been watching uh, multiple uh, YouTube videos of, uh, you know, you could teach yourself just about anything on YouTube. Did you know that? Yeah, I think that's true, um, including how to spatchcock. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Sounds like something we need to do to uh, various Republicans. I know, it just uh, sounds brutal is what it is. Okay, uh, so tr uh, the trade thing, the tariffs thing. Here, here, here's, what, um, what, here's what I'm thinking on, on this, and then you could tell me if you ever spatchcocked a turkey. I think what I will do, uh, because I'm obsessed with it now, is um, I will try a chicken first because it's smaller. And you only get the one turkey, which, by the way, was $1.15 a pound. And, and I have to tell you, I saw turkeys. I saw turkeys. You know, they didn't have like a brand name on them. They were just like in a white wrapper, uh, sort of like uh, porn, you know, like that. Uh, it was 46 cents a pound, 46 cents a pound. Now, if you want to go crazy and you get the fresh, the fresh, that was more expensive. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, and it wasn't imported. It was uh, basically from Minnesota is what it is. But... Um, Not Purdue. Um, what's Butterball? Butterball has this year. If you really want to spend, <laughs> you want to go crazy. Butterball has a cook from frozen version of the turkey. 
I wouldn't go near it. I don't know anything about it. Like, why would it be okay? How does that work? Not interested. I'm a spatchcock person at this point. At this point. I've always been a briner. I will still brine. Uh, I got to tell you, that brining kit that I usually get, I have to buy that from a place I never, ever shop because I just don't. I just won't, and I just don't, but I did. Uh, Walmart. Had to go to Walmart. They didn't have it at my grocery store. They didn't uh, bring it in this year. I don't know why. So, you know, you had to get it from Walmart, an $8 brining kit at Walmart, just so you know, just so you know the direction that uh, this is all going, was $15, $15 for a brining kit, which is salt. It's all with rosemary and thyme. You know, I should have made it myself. I should have. I really should have. I, I did it for the bag. I did it for the big, thick, you know, uh, del- delicious bag that you put in. Anyway, all right, the trade thing. Here, here's my thought on these things. Here's what Donald Trump apparently is proposing. Who knows? He's like, uh, you know, his version of uh, 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 tweeting, truth socialing out his trade policy. Okay. Dispense of any idea that this is going to be a meritocracy, okay? Because it isn't. It isn't. Uh, And that it's really a populist thing and that he's going to be all about the people, which is what we were about, and everybody's sitting there scratching their head and other various body parts going, how in the world did did they pilfer from us the love of the uh, working person, the love of the man, the love of the working man, the working woman, the working family? How did they pilfer that from us when we were the ones that lowered the prescription drug prices? We're the ones that were breaking up monopolies. We're the ones that were doing antitrust. You know, we have this uh, person that everybody is like hating on. Uh, her name's Leah, uh, over at, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, oh, what is it, uh, Commerce, trying to do antitrust stuff, trying to break up, uh, you know, the tech monopolies and all that. And uh, 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 Leah Leonard, Le- Le- you, what is it? Leo Leonard? No, not wait, wait, Leonard. I was a- anyway, uh, we digress. Uh, she, you know, like, how did they co-opt our message? How did they, okay, we'll talk about it, because I, I kind of understand it. But this trade thing. Okay, just so you know, it's a fact. It's a fact. And people don't. This is crazy. They really think that China is going to pay the import fee. No, you're going to pay the import fee. The company that imports the sneaker or the company that imports the uh, the shoe or the clothing or the pocketbook or the uh, computer or the tequila. Oh, now, now you're effing around, okay? Now... You have to round, you're going to find out, you people. You're going to pay extra for the tequila. You're going to pay. I am a Corona Premier person. That is my go to. It's got 2.5 carbs. I'm happy with it. I get my nice little buzz because I'm untainted by any other drugs. Ooh, to go back to that first hit. Wouldn't you give anything to be me? Yeah, you would. But. They're go- I mean, right now it's like uh, it goes anywhere from 17 to $20 for a 12-pack, okay? And that's how I buy it. I buy 12 at a time. It's going to go to $20, $25 if there's tariffs on it. You understand? Uh, tequila, I don't know. It depends on what you, uh, you know, prefer, what you uh, buy. Uh, but it's going to increase in prices too. Computers, cars, tech equipment, avocados. Like I said the other day, you're going to have a $10 avocado on your hands? Really, guacamole is going to become like manna from heaven? All right, it already is. It's pretty damn good. But there's three reasons why this might be happening. And whatever it is that's happening, I'm not really sure because he tweets his policy. Like puts it on Truth Social. What do we call that? Posts. Let's just call it posts. He posts on social media his policies now. He doesn't deal with the media anymore. He doesn't do sit-downs. Nobody talks to him. He don't talk to nobody. He just decrees. This is what I'm doing on day one. It can't possibly work for us, ordinary people. So what is this for? Clear. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for long. Speaking truth to power, The Randy Rhodes Show. If you voted for Trump because you thought he was going to bring grocery prices down, I have some very bad news for you. Uh, A lot of our produce comes from Mexico. Two-thirds of the tomatoes that Americans purchase are from Mexico. Ninety percent of the avocados that they purchase are from Mexico. Just to mention 
two examples. So that guac is definitely going to cost extra. Uh, if you voted for Trump because you thought he was going to bring down the cost of housing, a lot of our lumber, cement, other materials comes from Canada, which means that construction costs are going to go up. Not to mention all of the ways he's going to royal the U.S. auto industry because yeah. a lot of autos cross borders in North America multiple times before yes. they're ultimately finished and sold to consumers. Not to mention the fact that a lot of U.S. manufacturers purchase inputs, intermediate goods like metals and cement and other things from Canada, uh, from Mexico, and not to mention even the retaliation that we should expect. All of which is going to be very bad for consumers, not to mention, again, many of the U.S. workers that Trump allegedly wants to help. Right. So <laughs> he's really uh, not about helping you, which is what you voted for. I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, they keep on telling us that people, you know, uh, middle class people and ordinary people, um, they voted for Trump because they believe that he's going to bring the cost of living down. Well, if he does any of these things that he's posting on his, uh, you know, little social platform there, then the cost of things obviously go up because you pay the tariffs. The cost of importing anything is uh, paid by the person, the company, the corporation that is doing the importing. At, at the receiving end of the uh, purchase, there is a price, and that price includes taxes. Tariffs are taxes, and so whoever is receiving the goods is paying the tariff, the tax, and that's the bill that they receive. And then when they do whatever they're going to do with that item that they've imported, they pass that tax, that cost that they had to endure onto you. Hence, an avocado becomes more expensive because whoever is the grocer that's importing the avocado is paying the tax on it whoever's the importer that's paying the tax on the corona is uh passing the cost on to you whoever is whoever is taxing tequila needs to uh, go to hell i don't even drink this stuff okay it makes me crazy but uh, i know a lot of people are like that's where they draw the line so i want to be on your side because i'm on the side of people who buy things okay uh, this is madness, okay? And so, so, so what is he doing this for? Well, again, there's one of three reasons. And here, here's how I'm thinking of it. If you, first of all, I have to say, if you're China, you're thrilled. You're thrilled about this. Why? Because their economy is sluggish. We have an economy that is the envy of the world. Our recovery from COVID was the best recovery on the planet bar none. No one did better than us. No one did. Like it, don't like it, can't argue with it. Numbers are numbers. Math is mathing. Uh, but China did not recover in the same rapid way that we did. And so if you're talking about trashing our economy or slowing our consumer-driven economy by making consumers pay more for everything, China's probably sitting back and, you know, Xi is going, oh, do it. Go for it, buddy. You want to crash your economy? Please have at it. Have at it. Now, Mexico's already said, you know, we'll go tit for tat, which, uh, you know, I hate that expression because, you know, there's a word in there that I don't like. But, okay. Uh, and they're saying, look, you know, you want to force us up against the wall, MF, uh, then we'll, we'll have to see you and raise you. Every tariff you raise, we'll raise one too. You know, and here's a really big question. Who pays the tariff on the car, on the auto? Because the auto crosses country lines crosses in and out of Mexico, in and out of Canada, many times. Are you paying uh, the, the tax on every single part? Like, uh, for instance, I'll give you one. Mexico, right? So electrical harnesses, which are harnesses that hold the electrical wiring in a car. They're made in Mexico, okay? Typically, the car is there, and they put the electrical harness in, send it over the border, and then it gets wired here. Who pays the tariff? And then does it go back to Mexico for some other part and then come back into the United States? It's, it's likely, it's, it's probable that it does that. Same thing with the northern border. Canada also, cars come back and forth from Detroit into, uh, you know, Toronto and from Toronto uh, back to Detroit. Who pays that? This is like mind-blowing. And why is he saying he's doing this? Why? Well, I don't know why Canada. I don't know what the issue with Canada. He's saying Canada is also part of a border problem. 
Um, can I just show you one thing, just one thing real quick before I tell you the three reasons why this could be happening? So there were many caravans uh, that were put together uh, during the Biden years that didn't, uh, that, that didn't make it over to the United States. You know why, everybody? I, do you know why? There were six, if you're going to be real specific about it. Uh, let me be real specific. There were six caravans with thousands of migrants, uh, and they left from southern Mexico headed for the United States. But ever since we had uh, Mexican President Claudia Scheinbaum, yes, Claudia Scheinbaum, she celebrates Passover. She does. Um, She took office and um, those caravans have been stopped. She disbanded all of them before they even got to central Mexico. See, so this is without a reason what he's doing. He's saying he's doing it to stop the caravans, but the caravans have been stopped. Okay, they're not making their way from southern Mexico, even north of central Mexico. Nowhere near the northern Mexican southern U.S. border. Nowhere near there, okay? These caravans are being disbanded as they're, you know, making their way to the middle of Mexico. So there's that. Um, he, he's also saying he's doing the China thing because of fentanyl. Um, China doesn't make fentanyl, but they do make precursors, and they've stopped making some of the precursors, not all of the precursors, and they ship those precursors to Mexico, and Mexico manufactures the fentanyl and then sends it over, that's right, the legal port of entry, the legal port where trucks go. Carril fast. What does that mean? Fast lane. Yeah. Uh, Right over that Mexican, uh, you know, um, legal border, the actual commerce crossing. Uh, you know, they don't give their fentanyl, drug dealers don't, they don't give their fentanyl to moms with, uh, you know, uh, babies that are nursing because there's a real good chance they're not going to make it into a, a United States. So they give it to truck drivers and they pay them and they take the risk and they do it. So we need technology, not tariffs. Okay. Real quick, here's the three reasons. Either he's looking to open negotiations on his trade deal, which is the one that's in place now called the USMCA, which is NAFTA. (laughs) He just changed it to the USMCA so he could say he did something. He did nothing. And also uh, so he could sing it, apparently, or remember it because he loves the village people. So that could be one reason. The other one is he really is looking to crash our economy. On behalf of the crypto bros, the broligarchy, And the third reason is the good old-fashioned crony capitalism, where the swamp gets swampier because people are lobbying now for for waivers from the tariff. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Walter Masterson tries to explain tariffs to MAGA. I'm voting for the man that's going to take America back, baby. Donald J. Trump, man. What's one of your biggest issues? Probably going to be inflation. Because I sell T-shirts and all that stuff. Your T-shirts are made in the USA? No, my blanks, no. See, that's the thing Trump's talking about. If we tax them, hit tariffs, the same item they're making over there will cost the same to make over here. We pay the tariffs. Well, the companies pay the tariffs, not us. China doesn't pay the tariffs. We do when they come in. No, it doesn't work like that. Like if I'm buying a a thousand shirts from China and there's a tariff on it, I'm paying the tariff. Well, no, whoever's getting it imported in is going to pay the tariffs. Yeah, yeah. I'm the business owner. I'm paying the tariff. China doesn't pay it. I pay for it. If I'm the business owner and I buy a thousand shirts. I see what you're saying. I'm, China's not, Jolly. So I'm trying to explain. So who pays the tariff? They're paying the tariff. Do you think that? Do you believe that? I I was trying to say, because I sell merch as well. I sell you something for $10, right? You're going to sell it to him for $20. Exactly. But then I make you pay me $15 for it. Are you still going to sell it to him for $20? Am I going to sell it to him for $20? If I raise the price $5. Oh, it's going to have to go up. Right. Yeah, the consumer foots the bill. Have a good day. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like pulling teeth, man. It is like uh, such a heavy lift to explain a tax on something to people who are 
thinking that Donald Trump has their best interests at heart because he said so. Now, listen, if he does anything for the middle class, I'll be all about it. There's no doubt in my mind I would be all, if they cut defense spending and they get contractors out of their defense uh, budget, hey, yay, let's celebrate that. But this, this start of his where he's posting, uh, we're going to put tariffs on everybody, uh, that doesn't help me. That doesn't help you. That doesn't help the people that voted for him. So what is this about? It's either open season on lobbyists who are going to come and, uh, you know, ask for waivers for their corporate clients, right? And the lobbying business is going to go, woo, you know, uh, or he's uh, trying to crash our economy for, uh, you know, the crypto, uh, you know, the the sick crypto, uh, you know, caper that's being uh, perpetrated in the mines. It's the it's the mind virus that uh, Elon and Peter Thiel and Andreessen and a whole bunch of people have where all you need to do is crash the U.S. economy. The dollar is no longer the reserve currency of the world. And guess what is Bitcoin? We're all rich because the billionaire is the only ones that have Large amounts of crypto. Good God, man. It's just like, it's unbelievable. And, and Donald Trump himself said, it's a grift. Crypto's not real. Now, all of a sudden, he's got a crypto company. He actually has a crypto trading platform. Liberty, I think it's called. Of course it is. What else would it be called? Grift? American grift? American, I pick I your pocket? Res- I would respect that so much. Right? I mean, and, and by the way, the, the cost of his Trump Bibles, the cost of his uh, Trump sneakers, the golden ones, that's going to go up, too, because they're made in China. The Bible is made in China. Uh, but anyway, so I don't know. I, for me, it seems like crony capitalism. It seems like uh, going back to Smoot Hawley. It seems like going back to the bad old days of the 1930s, which Donald Trump seems to, like, revere and think was good uh, for, you know, oligarchs and the robber barons, and he would like to uh, be one. So I don't know. I think that might be the primary purpose. But if that's so, his people, his people, I don't know how long they're going to sit and take it. Honestly, I don't. Uh, because it's going to get real expensive real quick. And here we were at the end of the inflationary cycle, making a nice soft landing without having to put us through a recession, doing a really, really nice job of seeing gas come down. I mean, people are traveling right now. And, uh, you know, if you're listening to me, go ahead. Next time you pass a gas station, take a little gander at what the cost is. It's down. It's it's like, I mean, gas was under $3 here. It was under $3. I hadn't seen that in I don't know how many years. Long time. Long time since COVID. COVID was the last time I saw gas at the $2 mark. Okay? And now all of a sudden I'm looking at gas and it's like, you know, uh, under 3 It's like two ninety or two eighty nine. It's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. The cost of things are coming down. You know, um, like I said, I, I, I did my Thanksgiving shopping already. Uh, Jessica's here. I'm so excited. I can't even stand it. You could probably hear it in my bouncy, bouncy uh, nature today. But it's all because the child is home. Hi. I'm so thrilled. Uh, but I went and did my uh, Thanksgiving shopping because she has to work, and she's working, uh, you know, from my home. Uh, but she's working. And so, I mean, I was able to put together a really, really seriously delicious Thanksgiving dinner that used to cost, you know, I mean, during the, 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 the Trump years, it was like uh, 300 bucks, $300 for like eight people. And now you could do it for under two. And like I said, if I would have gotten the bland, you know, uh, no named, uh, you know, uh, generic turkey, God only knows where it comes from. It probably comes from turkey, you know, but it was 46 cents a pound. It really was. And let me tell you something. There was nary one of them left. Now, the fresh, they were over uh, 20 pounds each, and they were uh, about $55. So, you know, yeah, I walked. I walked because I'm a briner. I will uh, defrost and brine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. But prices are down. Why is he entering us into a trade war that is going to cost maggots everything, everything? And like I said, Either they're crashing our economy, and I don't know how many people are going to stay quiet about that. I don't know how many people are going to say, yeah, that's what we voted for. I I know that there are some. I know that there are some. I know there are some people that root for us to crash, that root for us to be hard up again and, you know, go back to inflationary cycles and all this just just because they want to uh, trigger the libs or something. I don't know. 
sad, sick, but that's a very small ma- uh, minority of Americans, right? Most of the people really do believe he's such a good businessman, he could bring prices down. He has no idea how to bring prices down. And if this is his opening salvo, it's a negotiation that God only knows what, what, what's at stake here. Like, what is he negotiating? We're the number one producer of oil and gas. So when you talk about Canada, Canada is a huge exporter of oil and gas. And, you know, these, these lunatic people on the other side, they want this uh, pipeline, you know, the, the, uh, the pipeline that, uh, you know, was stopped because it, it leaks and it was, you know, uh, leaching into the, the, the soil and the land, right? Uh, they want it restarted. Remember that that pipeline does not stop anywhere in the United States. It's, it's an express pipeline from Canada to Mexico. Bypasses us altogether. So I don't know why people were, you know, misled about that. But Canada imports, Canada exports uh, about 80% of its oil. I don't know. Is he trying to keep Canada's oil off the market? Why would he do that? We are energy independent. Why would he want to start a trade war over oil? I mean, that makes no sense because they'll just slap one on ours. And there we are back at, uh, you know, hey, Saudi, can you increase production? I mean, ridiculous. It's just a ridiculous tactic. It makes no sense. So maybe it's to open a negotiation to what end? I have no idea. Crash the economy? How many people are going to sit for that? How many people are going to be cool with that? I don't think very many. For the sake of crypto billionaires, you're going to crash our economy so that Elon Musk can control the universe and be king of the planet? Because that's what would happen. Clear. Call in, connect. Yeah. To speak to Randy, call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. All righty. Uh, Jahari in Michigan. Hello, my dear. Hello. How are, How are you, honey? I am good. I am on vacation till Monday. So. Yes, I will be in just, uh, you know, uh, five segments. <laughs> <laughs> in five segments? Okay, so I'm still at caught you today. Yeah. Um, now, okay, so the spatchcocking turkey thing. Yes. Okay. Yes, I've never done it, but I think my mom has done it, and it's not a bad thing. So It's a beautiful I have presentation. I some memory of her doing it yeah. with chicken, but I don't think with turkey. Right. So it looks cool. It looks all right. So I may have to try it. Um, I'm the turkey guy for the family, so I may have to try that one here. Yeah. Not this year, though. Me neither. No, not this year. I'm just obsessed with it, though. I'm going to do a chicken. I think that's uh, the answer, is to do a chicken. I think that's the best course. Yeah. Smaller scale. Yeah. Smaller scale, maybe softer bones. Yeah. Yeah, scale down. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, scale down. Test test at small scale and large when successful. Yes. Right. Yes. Now... The tariff thing. Okay. Gee, if only some people that can sp- barely spell mom backwards had paid attention <laughs> in history or economics class, they would have learned about something that was passed <laughs> in the 30s called the Smoot Hawley Tariff Act. Yes. You know. And gee, <laughs> what for a name? That there was a really, truly amazing and marvelous black Asian woman that for the last three and a half months had been telling them, oh, your prices are going to go up if he gets in the office by about $4,000. Yeah. Because that's not how freaking tariffs work. What for a name? I, I, uh, it's the, the pressure of a you name. Know the, name? the pressure of a name. You know name. the name, Randy? I think it rhymes with Pamela. Something like oh, that. Oh, that's right. Oh, yay. Pamela Harris. No, Kamala Harris. <laughs> you know, this is so fascinating to me because if Brett's telling the truth, okay, he will tell you that in the kitchen prior to beginning the show today, I engaged him in a conversation about trade, didn't I, Brett? And spatchcocking, which, uh, you know, set him upon, uh, you know, like a, a whirlwind of ideas. Uh, he did not know what it was. And then I downshifted into Smoot Hawley. And if he's to tell the truth, that is exactly what I brought up. Now, you know, Jahari, what the result of the 1930 Smoot Hawley Tariff Act was? 
had many yeah. results, all of them piss poor. Uh, it actually reduced the number and the amount of trade that the United States was doing with other countries, and it led to the Great Depression. That's number one. But number two, it led to Adolf Hitler. How? Yes. Yes, it did, because in Germany, where they were recovering from World War I, part of Smoot Hawley was pay your war debt, and they printed yeah. money to pay their war debt. It's just like Trump running around about NATO, NATO. They have to pay their own share or we're not defending them. Same exact MO. Fascists only know a couple of tricks and this is one of them. And uh, Germany, uh, you know, during the Hindenburg uh, era, decided that he was going to print money and pay the debt. And that's what led uh -huh. to hyperinflation and that's what led to the rise of the elected Adolf Hitler. Right. Yes. Right. Now, Bad trade deal. If only, Can you believe it? Yeah. If only people had paid attention to history. I you mean, know, and I'm that, not even just was, talking those people. That was, I'm talking about Gen Z. I'm that, talking that about that was grade school, and I remember not paying attention to it. I, this is another thing I was telling Brett. I go, you, you know, it, we didn't pay any attention to the Smoot Hawley thing. He, he knew the words too. I said I I had to learn it the hard way as an adult. Do you know, like live in real time, uh, talking to people on the air at the very beginning of my uh, talk show host career. I didn't know jack about Smoot Hawley because I never went to college, okay? And they taught that stuff in fourth grade. And I didn't pay attention in fourth grade. I couldn't wait to get to like band, you know, or like uh, uh, one summer when I went to band camp, you know, like that. I remember... I remember hearing about it in my high school economics class. Yeah. And in my history class, I had a really, really great history teacher. I credit her with the, with getting me into politics. But it came up in my economics class, I believe. And I didn't really pay much attention to it. It was just something to learn in school. And then I was taking this one class. I can't remember. I think it was a politics and religion class. And that was when I learned about uh, Senator... Reed Smoot, and I had to do a paper on him. And I was like, that name sounds familiar. And I looked him up, and I was like, oh, okay. Smoot Hawley. Yeah, yeah, this is familiar. Right. Yeah. Well, it, so, was, it was a horrible, horrible thing for the entire freaking world, okay? It was the worst trade deal. It came in, the it, it came in 1930, okay? We could have gone either way, could have gone either way. Uh, but we went straight into the Depression because of Smoot Hawley. Why? Because farm exports tanked. Uh, the, the amount of uh, goods uh, increased, uh, the number of exports we could export tanked. It just, it, it literally trashed our hanging by a thread economy. And it forced uh -huh. uh, Europe to, you know, print money and hyperinflation. And it led to aut autocracy. It led to fascism in Italy, yeah. in Spain, in Germany. It was that shock that Naomi Klein talked about yes. in Shock Doctor. That's it. It was one of them. Yes, it was. Now, here is what I need the Democrats to do. And here is what I need Joe Biden to do. Because you know what he's going to do about March, April, right? He's going to try and claim that the, he, he, what is it? I think it's March or April. That's when, no, April is at when the first quarter ends. I think March ends. And the first quarter reports come in. When GDP is marvelous, he's going to claim credit for it. Oh, I know. And when the February and March and April job reports come in and they're great, he's going to claim credit for it. And he's going to say, see, I fixed it. Yeah. Just by being here, I fixed it. We all know. What I need Joe Biden, or maybe even, actually it might even be better that Kamala does it, <laughs> is hold a press conference and say, this is our outgoing economic report. And get very loud and very vocal and celebrate and tell the American people exactly the condition that they are leaving the country in before the felon of the United States <laughs> takes over. So, I call him FOTUS. So I agree with you on that. Um, but I also know that if he's to be taken seriously, and I don't know that he is, 
this fun that we're talking about, these tariffs, it, it, this is all his day one stuff, okay? So the economy is going to tank pretty freaking quickly if he does what he says he's going to do on day one, okay? And there is no way he can blame that on, uh, you know, the previous administration because he will have come out with new policy. He will come out with new tariffs. He will come out with a new trade war. He will, you know, and he wants to take credit for, you know, day one stuff. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But I agree that uh, Biden and uh, Kamala ought to do a, uh, with charts, with charts and graphs, uh, this is what we were able to do in four years. And hopefully the next president will continue this uh, fabulous, uh, you know, uh, decline in in inflation and this wonderful rise in wages and union membership. I mean, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure how you would do it, but you need to do it in a way that's going to be splashy and catch massive attention. I don't know if it's maybe an Oval Office address, or maybe like a massive Ooh, speech I know, before I know. Congress. You get out. Ah, well, hit me. Okay, you get um, Michael Flatley and the uh, River Dancers without Michael Flatley. No, I'm sorry. Never mind. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Why don't we head to Four Seasons uh, Lawn Care Service? Oh, yeah. Let's do it at Four Seasons Landscaping. No. no. Well, actually, that would that, 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 that You would know, be, it, it that would, would work, would but be. only if, only if uh, somebody with hair dye is out in the hot sun and it's dripping because everybody would see it. Everybody would talk about it. It would go viral. I mean, it has to be something oh, that, that kind of— awesome. See, here's my thinking is why Michael Flatley— uh, it has to be something like pretty horrendous, pretty heinous, something really, really, uh, you know, stupid, or else nobody's going to see it, right? If it's just about, button okay. down Joe, nobody's going to see it. It needs to be a dark Brandon thing, you know? Okay, get Cat Williams dressed up in his uh, pimp name slick back suit and have him do the report. Oh, good God. No, I mean, like, um... That was a joke. I know. I'm thinking <laughs> of, like, who's the most offensive creature in Trump world? Uh, Kid Rock. There you go. Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah. Invite him. <laughs> or, yeah. Okay. Somebody. Somebody really bad. I mean, uh, otherwise it doesn't go viral. And, and you know, people will just let it, you know, wash over them. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting how people voted for their own pocketbook. Okay. We're doing really well, though. And he is signaling he's going to crash it. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Not one, but two legal victories for President-elect Donald Trump. On Monday, federal judge Tanya Chutkin dismissed the election interference case against Trump hours after special counsel Jack Smith said it should be dropped. In a brief six-page filing, Smith says this outcome is not based on the merits or strength of the case against the defendant, but because Trump is set to take office again in January. The dismissal is not because they don't stand behind the evidence. They feel it's strong. Not that they don't feel this is a warranted prosecution. They certainly do. But because the Constitution mandates that they cannot uh, prosecute a sitting president. On Monday, Smith also asked a federal appeals court to remove Trump as a defendant in the classified documents case in Florida, which is currently on appeal. I did absolutely nothing wrong. He's a deranged person. Smith's days as special counsel were already numbered, as Trump always denied the charges and said if elected, he would get rid of Smith. It's so easy. I would fire him within two seconds. Trump responded Monday, calling the cases political hijacking. Uh Donald Trump won the verdict of the American people, not Jack Smith. While Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff, who served on the January 6th Select Committee, criticized Smith's decision. I think this compounds the mistake the department made by delaying so long before initiating the investigation of those who were higher up, like Donald Trump. Uh, And it just sets a terrible precedent that... Essentially, the presidency of the United States is a get-out-of-jail-free card. 
Yes, that's what it is now. And he ran to stay out of jail, and it freaking worked. Um, so, you know, listen, I, 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 the, the, the thing that really, really freaks me out, maybe you're pissed off too, I don't know. I can sense it, though, about you. I can, uh, I can feel you. I can feel you. Um, is that of all these cases, you had a slam dunk case of stealing documents and showing them to people who had no need to know or any clearance whatsoever of any kind, uh, that he was lying. First, he said he didn't have them. Then he said he had them, but he was entitled to have them. Then he said if they were there, it was planted by the FBI. Remember all this? I mean, just the lying about these documents was endless, endless. And now uh, he has a judge that he actually appointed sit and judge whether or not Jack Smith was constitutionally appointed. Uh, special counsels. Hmm. Let's see. Merrick Garland, special counsel. Um, who else did he appoint a special counsel to look into? Oh, that's right. Hunter Biden. And I don't see Hunter Biden's case being dismissed because, you know, uh, his his, uh, you know, uh, Durham was, uh, you know, uh, anti unconstitutionally appointed. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Did you see that argument anywhere? No, because you know what? It's not real. It's not a real argument. But Aileen Cannon, who's, I don't know, groping to be something, something bigger than what she is in Florida, uh, she says, oh, no, special counsel was uh, unconstitutionally appointed and uh, you can't do... So here's here's the factoid. Here, here's the thing that really sticks in my craw whatever that body part is is this your what is your craw i don't know right see i don't know i don't know Ask mark robinson i'm sure he does. mark robinson which part is the craw and does it turn you on um can you rent me a video about it <laughs> okay so here's the thing the documents case in florida dismissed the January 6th case in D.C., which we all saw. We all saw it. Dismissed. Uh, the New York fraud case, no sentencing. No sentencing. He was, he was found guilty, okay, uh, but no sentencing. 30, that's where the felonies come from, okay? That's 34 freaking felonies, 34 counts, but no sentencing until he's not president anymore. If he should live that long, then we'll, okay. Who did get sentenced? Uh, or who did get convicted? Who actually did? That's right, Hunter Biden. Merrick Garland couldn't get Donald Trump on any of these crimes, but he was able to not only get Hunter Biden, uh, you know, his, his case to a jury uh, on a gun charge, the only person that has any gun laws applied to him is Hunter Biden. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's fabulous. I mean, it's fantastical is what it is. Merrick Garland actually was, uh, got Hunter Biden all the way to trial on a gun charge for which he was convicted. And then he did appoint a special counsel, swear to God, I think his name was Weiss. He appointed a special counsel to look into Hunter Biden's tax issue and because the guy was a special counsel, even though he was a U.S. attorney in Delaware, he was now in, imbued with the power to look outside Delaware for any crimes or criming that Hunter Biden may have engaged in. And he found a tax problem, tax fraud with Hunter Biden. So Merrick Garland was able to bring Hunter Biden to the bar of justice but was unable to bring Donald Trump anywhere near it. Okay. Okay, that, that's, that sounds like a well-functioning uh, Justice Department, doesn't it? And let me tell you what this whole thing did for Donald Trump, and it did do something for him. There's a really, really wonderful article. I, I would say print it out. You know, yes, your kids are going to make fun of you for printing the Internet. F them, okay? Or, you know, just bring your little uh, tablet. See, I'm not a Mac person. I'm a PC person. I'm not that portable, so that's why I print. But bring it to the bathroom with you Thanksgiving-ish and uh, read this 11-page article because it's called I Watched Orban Destroy Hungary's Democracy. Here's my advice for the Trump era. 
and it's written by a former member of parliament in the Hungarian parliament. And he talks about how uh, this happens. How does, because he said all autocrats are elected. They never, you know, take over in a coup. That doesn't happen. You know, we're not, uh, you know, going to see, uh, you know, uh, a military coup where someone takes it away from Donald Trump or a military coup, you know, where somebody took power away from Joe Biden, for that matter. No, we have elections. They did, too. So did Germany. And all these autocrats, all these fascists, they all were elected, duly elected, fairly elected, all of them. And then they seek to disable Congress, their parliament, whatever, with the Enabling Act in the case of Adolf, right? In this, in this instance, you're going to see Donald Trump make a pass at Congress to, to, to give him the, um, the authority to do something called the Impoundment Act. We could talk about it after the uh, holiday. But basically what it says is that uh, if Congress says this is how the money gets spent, Trump says, no, it's not. And that, that he can do it. He can impound the money that they appropriated and uh, deploy it someplace else. Therefore, no need for Congress. He's enabled the Enabling Act, okay? But what this article also includes is the point that I'm talking about now, where Donald Trump not only talked about the ordinary guy and made the ordinary guy his focus, uh, but he also told the ordinary guy that the elites were out to get him. The elites were always out to get him, even though he's a billionaire, even though he cuts corners, even though he doesn't pay ordinary workers, even though he doesn't believe in overtime, and he's told you that, even though he celebrates with Elon Musk, how Elon Musk, uh, you know, uh, oh, you have a union, uh, you know, shop, and, and they want to quit? Fire them. Just fire them. Fire them all. I love the way you do that. Even though that is who he is, and you've heard him say that, and his supporters heard him say that, he was able to turn himself into an ordinary Joe by saying the elites at the Justice Department were hunting him. They were hunting him, and he didn't do anything wrong, and he wants to fight back. He's your retribution. They're doing it to you, and they did it to him, and he will stop it. And how will he stop it? He'll take over the Justice Department, too. It's very, uh, it's very interesting how this actually happens and how it works. The first thing to understand about all of it, though, is we're not the first country that this has happened to. We are not the first country that has had a democracy, and I'll say it in past tense, and, uh, you know, is watching an autocrat take over the reins of the institutions and destroy them. This is not a first. It's Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for long. Speaking truth to power, The Randy Rhodes Show. You were asked what you thought should happen with these cases, and you said that the cases shouldn't be dismissed. They should be deferred until after he leaves office. Is th does that mean you think there was an alternative to what Jack Smith did today? Yes, I think there was an alternative. The alternative would have been to postpone further proceedings in the case until after he left office. Now, what Jack Smith did is seek to dismiss the case without prejudice. That means they can bring charges against Trump again once he leaves office. Right. But it is nevertheless a very uh, serious distinction because the status quo now is no charges against the president. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have to upset that status quo to later bring charges again, as opposed to merely postponing the proceedings, in which case the presumption is they continue when he leaves office. Now, Jack Smith relied on the opinion of lawyers within the department uh, who said that they thought it was required by the Constitution mm -hmm. to dismiss the case, but it isn't required by the Constitution. No. Uh, there's nothing that would interfere with his performance of the office, whether the case is dismissed without prejudice or merely postponed. So I think this is a serious mistake by the department. It compounds the mistake that you alluded to, which is they waited a year before they even brought this case forward or, or began the investigation. Uh, and then you have the Supreme Court with its immunity decision. And now you have a potential nominee in Pam Bondi, who is saying she's going to prosecute the prosecutors. All of that um, goes against what Jack Smith said in his brief uh, motion, which is that no one's above the law. So we're hearing that phrase a lot, mm -hmm. but we're not giving validity to it by these actions. Right, because justice delayed is justice denied, and we know that too. And uh, this whole debacle uh, was really in the hands of the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, 
who th he told us that he was going to prosecute the January 6th case from the bottom up, from the bottom up, like the worst, uh, you know, the, 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 and the people that were prosecuted at first, at first, were like um, the people that, um, I don't know how to say it, defecated on the floor. Ugh, what grotesque humans they were. Uh, but yeah, those people and the guy with the Confederate flag and, you know, that. And then you uh, downshifted into the people who beat police officers with Blue Lives Matters, uh, uh, you know, flagpoles and crutches and stole uh, police shields. And then you prosecuted the people who used pepper spray uh, against the police and threw a, a, a fire extinguisher at the head of one of the cops and crushed another cop in the doorway. I mean, and then, uh, you know, after that, you got to the uh, uh, Enrique Tarrios and the uh, Stuart Rhodeses who got, you know, big... Si and then we were going to go to the president. Should have been the exact opposite. It should have been top down. It should have been the worst offenders first. Uh, we, I don't know. I mean, you know me. I never trashed Merrick Garland. I never did. Because I wanted to see what he was doing um, before I criticized what he was doing. And now we know that what he did was get that terrible criminal Hunter Biden to the bar of justice, to a trial, to two trials actually, and, uh, you know, plea deal in California on a tax fraud charge and, uh, you know, a gun charge where Hunter Biden is the only person in America for whom there are gun laws that you could go to jail for. And that's the result that we got from Merrick Garland. And we're there. I mean, this is it. It's done. Cases were uh, dismissed until he's not president anymore. And then uh, you could reapply, uh, you know, and, and press charges yet again and go through the whole rigmarole. I mean, this is so bizarre that this is what, what we ended up with. And you got to kind of sit there and say, is there a point to saying that there's something wrong with America's justice system? Yes, there is. You know, we've said it for a long, long time. Uh, started saying it when we saw people being pulled over for broken taillights and turning up dead. When we saw people sitting in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, in their living rooms watching television, eating popcorn, uh, eating ice cream, and ending up dead. When we see people sleeping in their beds and waking up dead, we sort of kind of know that there's been a problem, but the idea that the Republicans, of all people, co-opted it because they applied it to Donald Trump, he's the victim. That is, uh, you know, that's the problem with the justice system, that you know, uh, guys who literally do cheat, guys who actually defraud people, guys who actually steal classified documents and show them as bragging rights to people that have no business seeing them, uh, that guys who, uh, you know, pr uh, practice, I'm going to say that word, you know, I don't love it, but stochastic terrorism where they just, you know, say stuff through a bullhorn and they say all kinds of things. They say peaceful things. They say not peaceful things. They say violent things. They say a whole host of things so that when someone who hears the thing that caused them to go do the violent thing, he can say, but I said peaceful. You said a lot of things. And some of them were violent. Well, it's not my fault that he heard that and that, you know, yeah, that's stochastic terrorism. And, and that he goes, he, he goes out there and turns himself into the victim in our system of justice. That is so bizarre when you consider that because he is who he is, he didn't go to jail. He didn't. He didn't even go on trial in Florida. He didn't go on trial in Georgia. He didn't go on trial in D.C. It didn't even get that far. And the Supreme Court, oh, my God. You see, always, always look at the top and see what's trickling down to you. And the Supreme Court took so long to make a decision on whether or not there was immunity that could be claimed on the part of Donald Trump because he was president that day. And they took forever, just long enough where there wouldn't be enough time. To, and, you know, people in, 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 in the lawyering, uh, you know, the prosecutorial profession, they all know. They all know. 
It's taken too long. It's taken too long. They know what's going on. And it went on for a really long time. And they said, well, there are certain things that a president does that is under the umbrella of official duties. And if the president is doing something official, and we're not saying that what he was doing there that day was official, okay, that he wasn't doing it as a candidate for president. We're not saying he was doing it as an official duty of the president. We're saying he could have been doing it as a candidate for the president. But the court has to sift through all the evidence and make sure that none of the evidence that is going to be produced in a courtroom against a candidate for president is something that they got when he was doing an official act as president. What the actual F? And that's what that's that's how it played out. Now Hunter Biden, of course, was not the president. <laughs> and there was no delay around anything that happened with him. He did enter into a plea deal, which was then um objected to by the uh, prosecutor in the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware. And so that actually got retried as a much bigger case. (laughs) How in the hell does that happen? Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. They did not vote for him to dismantle our democracy, to attack the Constitution, to politicize all of our agencies, and certainly not as a referendum on his criminal cases. Uh, those cases should have been played out in a court of law. I believe the attorney general should have started the investigation a lot earlier. I believe the Supreme Court should have moved much quicker in its opinion. Uh, and this should, they, the, Donald Trump should not have been able to run out the clock on these charges. Uh, but I certainly don't think anything that came from the election was a reflection of support for Donald Trump uh, getting rid of these cases, largely because the American people, uh, as you and I, as well, we don't know what the actual evidence is. No, the, the people did not vote uh, to, to uh, you know, end Donald Trump's legal hassles. They did not. People voted because they said they, they believed that Donald Trump was going to make the cost of living lower. They believed that Donald Trump was on the side of the ordinary guy, the ordinary Joe. He was going to protect the people. Now, if his opening thing is um, that he was the victim and that he's going to get retribution and prosecute the prosecutors and put tariffs on everybody and, you know, raise the prices of everything, uh, that I don't know how long the maggots are going to sit still for it. I really don't. I don't know how long they're going to say, but that's not what we voted for. We voted because you said that you could bring down the price of groceries. You said that you could, uh, you know, uh, stop the the price of uh, gasoline from going back up. You said that you could make, uh, you know, housing a thing. You could bring back the American dream. You said that you would, uh, you know, no no tax on tips, and you would, uh, you know, uh, I mean, what else did he promise? No tax on tips, and that's it. No tax on tips. I guess that's how, how they vote. No, ta- no, seriously. I mean, you know, listen, and, and if, if he does anything that makes sense for the middle class, because I'm a full-fledged member of it, and if he does anything to make things better, like, um, okay, I don't have credit cards. I refuse to have credit cards. And as a business owner, that's tough. That's very, very, very freaking hard, but that's how I do it, okay? Uh, but if he actually caps the amount of uh, interest that a credit card company can charge you, right? I mean, this is Elizabeth Warren's idea. So she always wanted, you know, the the, uh, interest rate on a credit card to be capped at 10%. And if Donald Trump is going to do something like that, you could best believe that I'm all about it and that Elizabeth Warren would be all about it, okay? If he could build more housing, which is what Kamala Harris was proposing, right? She was saying, let's, uh, let's invest in 3 million more units, and she meant it. She meant it. And if he's interested in doing something like that, we would be all about it. You would have uh, Pramila Jayapal, who's the head of the Progressive Caucus in the House of Representatives. You'd have Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, saying, yes, let's do this. Let's move ahead with this. Let's get this passed. 
If you're going to raise taxes on billionaires and make them pay their fair share so people could have child care or universal pre-K, we're all about it. We're all about it. But all he did was co-opt the posture of a person who's serious about doing this, but he's not. But if he does do it, I'll be all about it. But if he begins with retribution and prosecuting Adam Schiff, like that's going to put a nickel in your pocket or help you pay for child care, or that's going to get you health insurance, if he starts off with, hey, we're going to repeal the ACA, if he starts off with, we're going to peel back Medicaid for the poorest Americans so that they could die and die quickly, if his health care plan really is don't get sick, I don't know how long they're going to sit and say, oh, my God, what did we do? I don't know. I really don't know. But there will be some who will sit there and, and say, yeah, only because other people are suffering and the, the others are the liberals or the others are the progressives or the others are black or the others are Hispanic or the others are Asian or the others are whatever, because that's all part of the autocrats' efforts. So... What you have in Donald Trump so far, because he's been president once already, and he hasn't done anything for ordinary people except watch us die and get buried in, in, out of freezer trucks in Potter's Field in New York, which is the poor man's grave, unmarked freaking graves. So if he actually steps up to the challenge and lowers uh, living costs for people, if he builds more housing, if he lowers the interest rate on credit cards, if he raises taxes on billionaires, if he, uh, I don't know, uh, does any of these good things, I think we'll all be like, oh, okay. Okay, he, he changed his stripes and he's really all about leaving a legacy that's uh, kind of worthy of the people who voted for him. But if he does what he's already posted on social media, and that is enter into some sort of a trade war so that people have to pay him, lobby him, grease him in order to get waivers for their particular business to not have a tariff on imports, right? If that's why he's doing it, or alternatively, if he's doing it to crash the economy uh, on behalf of the crypto bros who want to see that become the currency of the world, that's what PayPal was supposed to be, you know? PayPal was supposed to be an alternative payment method. It was supposed to be something outside of the reserve currency of the world. It was supposed to be something that replaces the dollar, something that replaces the reserve currency of the world with just an electronic transfer, okay? Uh, it didn't turn out that way. And Peter Thiel is, like, uh, disappointed, but it didn't turn out that way. And Elon Musk is disappointed. But now they have grander designs on you. And they would like to uh, be, uh, you know, uh, the chairman of the universe. They would like to be the people who own everything. The all power. It's, it's almost like Oz, you know. I mean, I'm going to go see Wicked this weekend. I already bought my tickets. I'm very excited. Women know what I'm talking about. I have Wicked on my toenails. I put Wicked on the, yeah. But um, honestly, it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, it's like it's 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 like, you know, uh, the great wizard, you know, he can make things. happen, But he can't. He can't. And he's only saying he can so that you will put all the power in him because he alone can fix it kind of a thing. So he's going to start off. I don't know. This is my best guess. He's going to start off with a very, very chaotic beginning. OK, like already he's not doing FBI background checks on any of his nominees, none of them. So the Senate, if we have confirmation hearings, they will be going in there blind. They will not know anything uh, that would be important to know if it came out on the con side of the ledger, not the pro side of the ledger. They won't have any of that information. What Donald Trump is, is proposing is that he will not do FBI background checks on any of these people. He will put them forward. They can have confirmation hearings. And then on the back end, just like with Jared, who was told not to, he, he was flagged not to get a uh, clearance, a security clearance. But Donald Trump gave him one anyway because he could. And once Donald Trump is president, he can give security clearances to anybody he wants, even people that haven't gone through background checks. Anybody, anybody he wants. And then a trade war. That's chaos. Why would he do that? I'll tell you why. The 
This is the Randy Rhodes Show. Hey, to speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Oh, my God. Happy Thanksgiving. If I forget to tell you, I had a great time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rocky in California. Hi, Randy. Hi. Um, this is actually the first time I've gotten to talk to you. It is. Um, yes, I called before, but it was like you were just at the end of your show. And I sent you a COVID ball holiday. <gasps> I have I- it. I still have it. <laughs> it's the most, oh, okay. it's so creative. I, I just, I don't know why people, uh, you know, uh, don't have that all over their tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, listen, I, you know, since the election, I have been waking up every night. And the only thing I can do is journal about it because I'm so freaked out. I know. I have I, it too. I think about everything that is the worst possible thing that could happen with all of this going on. And my question is, like, Joe Biden has the power to order the FBI to do these background checks for all these people that Trump is, like, putting in place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's a possibility? Yeah. That will not (laughs) happen? Yeah, I, it, it's totally, uh, you know, within his purview to do so. It doesn't say uh, the the Justice Department should investigate, you know, whatever the president-elect wants. It says the president could request background investigations of the FBI. So, yes, he could and he should. I, I really believe he should. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to be something dark brandony, you know, that's uh, going to happen. But, see, this is why Donald Trump needs to complete his picks, right, so that this can then happen because when you're proposing people like Matt Gates, nobody thinks that that's a real pick. Everybody thinks that he's, he's making the next pick look less disgusting. And so you'll say, Oh, at least it's not Matt Gates, you know? So everybody's right. trying to see who he really is going to settle on Pam Bondi. I mean, it's like, she, she's terrible. She's, and here's why. OK, you know, you have Kamala Harris as a, an attorney general of your state and we have Pam Bondi as a previous attorney general in Florida. The two were attorney generals at the same time. OK, Pam Bondi allowed she sided with the banks. She sided with the foreclosure mills. She sided with the people who were taking your houses away. Uh, Kamala Harris sided with the people who own the house. She sided with people who were being wrongfully foreclosed on. She sided with people against the banks and won them billions and billions and billions of dollars in recompense. So that's the difference between these two, okay? Yeah. Right. So um, do you call the White House and, and write the White House? I've been calling my representatives every day, especially with this HR 9 Four nine five business, and I can't believe Democrats in the House voted for it. It is and weird. It kind of, so uh, what? Is, what Rocky's talking about it. for I mean, people who don't know uh, legislation by its number nine four nine five is uh, to strip uh, the uh, tax exempt status from, especially media like NPR and PBS and us. And, uh, you know, other not for profit media uh, organizations and, you know, and Mar- label them terrorists organizations and label them terrorists. Yes. Yes. Label them terrorists. <sighs> um, well, thank you for your service. I yeah. listen to you every day. Well, I know that because I've had that COVID thing. So what she made, <laughs> this was so, so, so original and so cool. And back from the Air, Air America days as well. <laughs> I still have it. I will always have it. It's on my tree every year. It has been ever since you sent it to me. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, that makes me so happy. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Happy holidays. You Happy too, Rocky. And you. Yeah. Enjoy Have it. Have a great day. Eat bye. everything. Eat everything. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yep. laughs> All right. Bye. bye. So she made me, um, it's like she took a styrofoam ball, she painted it, and then she put uh, golf tees in it. Remember that? And it looked like the COVID uh, the the bouncing COVID uh, cell yes. that we were all looking at for two years we were looking at. She made me a whole bunch of uh, those to hang on your tree for the 2020 Christmas season and the 21. And I have them because we have, we have like uh, every year we have an ornament, you know, that we pick out of the family and then we have fun ones, you know, and every year we add. And Rocky, you have a, a permanent place on our Christmas tree. 
Now, you might be asking, why do I have a Christmas tree? Oh, bite me. <laughs> That's the reason. All right, Brother David in Kansas. We gather together to give thanks for Randy. She teaches and reaches with facts that are true. Thanks to her persistence, we're forming a resistance and gorgeous girdles for all and not just a A few. few. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's tackling totalitarian turkeys Tuesday, sister. They're all turkeys, man. Every one of them is a turkey. But thank you very much for the song. You know what that reminded me of? You know the girl from, um, what's that that, series, Nowhere? What what is it called? The one that takes place in Kansas? Somebody somewhere, Bridget Everett. Yeah, Bridget Everett. She just did this body, body, uh, you know, have you seen it? Uh, um, A cover, a cover of, uh, what the hell song was it? It was like a real campy thing. It was awesome. She's amazing. Who knew she oh, was? Oh, she is amazing. Holy yeah. crap, Ola. Really good. Um, I thought of well, you when I saw it. Well, yeah, there it is. Um, and to the chat room, hi, chat room, happy conspicuous consumption yes. day in two days. And um, still more of us. And I keep are, saying no, it. it. There are. There are. And going to go see Wicked Thanksgiving night because, boy, that one has dropped into the luck of being topical all over again. I know. Oh, but it's going to be so great. You know, I've seen it on Broadway. I'm very I, I saw it. Here. I saw it a couple times with Jessica, always with Jessica. This is like, well, yeah. she loves Broadway the way I do and the way you do. Um, and we saw it with Adina Mandel and, oh, um, and Kristen. Kristen Chenoweth. Yes. Oh, God. So and when I saw that those two said that these two are unbelievable, right. that's when I right. bought the tickets. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very, very excitable. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm so, very excited. Since this is for a while anyway, the last free and fair Thanksgiving we can all enjoy. Um, I I say let's do it. I do too. Let's eat up, everybody. Eat up. Uh, listen, I, I have to I have to tell you. It, it, Maybe he will have a uh, come to Jesus moment where he realizes why people voted for. Nah, forget. <laughs> oh God, it's it's like now now we're at this point in our in our American lives where every time a bell rings, an angel loses its wings. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was gonna suggest everybody do not engage with your drunk uncle. He got a big W. Nobody, nobody, don't engage. Nobody's gonna talk politics. Nobody. I, I really don't think it's a thing because they're sated, okay? They won, and they're happy. Um, and we're so depressed that we won't bring it up. And so, you know, it's uh, it's not going to be— God, I, I hope you're right. Yeah, I, really I don't do. think it's a thing this this year. You know, I just don't. Unless somebody goes, you take one more shot of it. Do you know what that tequila is going to cost next year? And and they get into the trade. Oh, then, then it downgrades. Then it downshifts into chaos. Okay, so I was going to tell you why he's doing it. So this is why I believe his opening salvo is what it is, okay? His opening salvo seems to be um, that he's not going to do FBI background checks, which, of course, Biden can do on his, on Donald Trump's nominees. Yes, he can. Um, But he says he's not going to do that. He's just going to give out everybody's security clearance when he becomes president, and then everything's about retribution. Pam Bondi is going to prosecute the prosecutors. She's going to investigate the investigators. And this is what his his Justice Department is going to be about. And then we're going to have a trade war over here, and prices are just going to whoosh. Okay, if, if that's what actually occurs, this is what he's promising to do, and if that's what actually occurs, here's why. He will be creating chaos so that he can point to chaos and say, only I can stop the chaos. But you have to imbue me with all the power. And then I can make it stop. That's the reason why he would open with chaos. Now, people will get hurt. It will cost a pretty penny. People are already, uh, you know, adjusting their budgets for 2025 with that in mind, especially people who are on fixed incomes, especially people who live in already expensive uh, states and cities. But on the other hand, he could actually open up with, we have hearings and they're a hoot, they're hysterical because these people are just ill-equipped poorly educated on the subjects that they are 
you know, and it's word salad and garbage. And, you know, we have a Senate now that includes Adam Schiff. <laughs> you know, he's a senator now on the Judiciary Committee. And Chuck Grassley, who's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, here, chew on this all. He's what, 93, 94, 95? He's like, he's like a corpse just sitting up, sitting there. He's the chairman of the So I don't know which way it's going to go. But enjoy this holiday because this is the best one. No gifts and just an attitude of gratitude. Yeah.